All right. Hello, everybody. It's the Meister from Brews and Tunes. Cheers. Uh, very, very excited. I am chatting with a metal legend today, the one and only Mr. Tony Trulio of the Mighty Liege Lord. Uh, Tony, how you doing, my friend? Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. Yeah. This is great. This is great. Uh, so uh, I guess, you know, important question to start off with. What What are you drinking today? Uh, I've never had this, or I don't think I've. Rad Burger from Germany. Nice. I think it's not like it's probably a germ a better German pronunciation, but I love German beer. I love you know we got back together. We've been to Germany a few times, and I just love the German German beer. To me, is oh phenomenal. yeah. Oh, I'm I'm right there with you. I, I, yeah, I'm a huge German beer fan. Love it. Yeah, Pilsners, Lagers. Yeah, Lagers. Munich Lagers. Oh. Those are, those are my thing, my two favorite. I'm not like a big IPA guy, so I dig both of those. Those are my, probably two top ones. Nice. Uh, awesome. Yeah, my wife and I just got back from uh, the Netherlands a few weeks ago. And uh, yeah, the beer there, because, you know, since they're right next door to Germany uh, right. and Belgium. Um, and then there was also great uh, beer from the Netherlands as well. So, yeah, I was in heaven. It was, I think I, I ate my, I've, oh, sorry. I never had any, maybe, I don't think I've had. Netherlands beer. It's great. There's some great, and you probably you probably like, especially it's very. There, a lot of them are very similar to German style beers. Lots of lagers and pilsners and right. those types of lighter beers, and then some bigger stuff. But, um, but yeah, I, I think, I think I ate my weight in cheese and drank my weight in beer while I was there. It was just couldn't help it. It was just delicious everywhere I went. It was great. Um, Europe, Europe is amazing. I, oh. I feel so at home. You know, when we're there. My, you know, my daughter is currently. In Italy, she gets home oh, cool. Sunday on a, right. with her Italian class. She's seeing some of the north, which I've never been to. So can't wait to hear stories. Nice. Yeah, very cool. That's great. Yeah, because you're, uh, yeah, with your your name, you're from southern Italy, correct? Your family? My mom and dad came over after the war, yeah. They're from okay. a really small town in between Naples and Rome. Nice. Oh, very cool. Um, so I would imagine... Uh, then there's a lot of uh at, at family parties and there's a lot of great food and probably a lot of great wine as well growing up yes growing up totally you know they're all unfortunately they've all passed but you know that's how we you know celebrate we we made wine we made sausage tomato sauce jarred pepper, just everything you know it's like nice. we had enough food to last us the entire winter with every you know everything we did it was Great time growing up. And, you know, our drummer, Frank Cortese, that's on the all uh, Leech Lord stuff, he's my first cousin. So we oh. grew up like one big family, you know, just celebrating Italian culture, you know? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know you were related. That, that's cool. I had no idea. That's great. First cousins are more like brothers because we lived to basically next door to each other. And that's, uh, you know, it's how Leech Lord, along with Matt, got started with the three of us. Wow, very cool. I did not know that. That's amazing. Um, well, let's let's talk about Liege Lord. Let's talk about um, so uh, a lot of cool stuff happening right now. In fact, uh, and I, I've got both of them, but I'll just hold up. So, uh, of course, the uh, uh, the second two albums um, were recently re released, remastered, and re released by Metal Blade. Um, right. so I definitely jumped all over that. I'm, I, I need to get them on vinyl, but I, I picked up the CDs cause I couldn't wait, uh, for the vinyl to come out. So I grabbed those. Um, and it's, it's just, it's been a little while since I had listened to this stuff and it just, man, it's so good. It's so amazing how, uh, relevant it sounds now to me and, and, and also kind of transports me back into those, those, you know, mid to late eighties, uh, in, in, in such a good way and such a, you know, uh, it, it's, it's, it, it's so cool hearing that. And especially remastered, they sound rich and perfect. I haven't, I haven't gotten them yet. I know oh. <laughs> Joe's reached out to see if we can get a couple copies, but I'd love to, I, I want to hear how they, you know, remastered. I never, I didn't hear anything. Oh, they're, they you sound, know, they look cool. Fantastic. You know, yeah. the colored vinyl look fantastic. Yeah. They sound great. In fact, um, Last weekend, my uh, my twenty three year old twenty three year old son was hanging out with me. He came up to hang out, and we were having a couple beers. And I I threw it I threw in uh, um, uh, Master Control and just said, "Hey, check this out." 
and he was blown away. And he's a huge Iron Maiden fan, so he he picked up you know kind of you know Matt's uh, you know or Joe sorry Joe's vocal kind of similarities to Bruce, even very you know different, but there's some definite similarities there. But also just kind of song structure and everything. And he was just like, "This is amazing. Who is this band?" I'm like, "Oh, it's Liege Lord from the, the the 80s." And he's like, "I love this. I need to pick this up. This is great." I'm like. Oh, yeah, said, thank, thank you. That's what yeah. it's all about. Yeah, it's you know, uh, such wild. good stuff. Such and and the cool thing, I mean, not only do we have you know this re re released, remastered, re released stuff, the the fact that you guys got back together. Well, I guess it's been uh, around ten years ago now. Um, yeah. uh, and that's you know another gift for us metalheads is the fact that Liege Lord is back um, and, uh, I, and has been for a little while. But I, I whenever I see Oliver, I always say. You're the reason. Keep it true. We got back. It was it was a, the platform. We never really talked about it. He, he wanted to book us, and Joe, you know, Joe came to me, and I said, "As long as Matt does it, because you know Matt's like we're childhood friends, and he, yeah. he was cool." You know, I always I, I'm like, "You're the reason, Oliver." You know, and what what a festival he he you know a couple of them that he did nice. those are amazing. So that's the, so Oliver approached you you and basically said. You know, hey, what do you think about Liege Lord playing again? Is that is that basically how it happened? I believe he went to Joe because Joe does all the business for the band. Hmm. Um, yeah, Joe reached out to me, and you know, it was it felt really good to just. And I was not in fast metal shape. I wasn't really playing stuff like that. I you know I, I've done the helmet stuff. That was kind of like, you know, when I first started playing with Paige was after Helmet broke up, we had a band called Gandhi. That's different. It's slower. It's, you know, drop D tuning. So right. that was my kind of getting back into playing heavy because I was doing jazz and, and blues and, you know, that that style. So, yeah, I guess I, I think Oliver is the reason he extended this great, you know, festival to us and we said, let's do it. Nice, nice. Well, and that's what one thing I think has been really cool you know, for, for especially people our age in our age group is there's this, I don't know if it, you'd call it a renaissance or kind of a resurgence of that classic eighties, like pure, just American heavy metal, like whatever you want. I mean, some people call it power metal, but yeah, I, I it's traditional metal, you know, like bands like, you know, Liege Lord, Jag Panzer, um, you know, uh, Omen, uh, right. Warlord, you know, just that there's a lot of interest in those bands again. I'm not, which is great, you know, which I, I never lost interest, but it's cool that all of a sudden all of this is, you know, to see that these bands are playing again. I mean, Jag Panzer's always been around, but they've always been, you know, right. They, they never really went on maybe a hiatus here and there, but Mark's always kept that together. You know, those guys yeah. are fantastic. Yeah. Love them. Yeah, great band. And and it's just cool that, you know, you're seeing a lot of these bands, you know, playing bigger festivals. I mean, you guys played Vakken not too long ago. Um, that wasn't with me, though. Joe Joe did that in, I think it was 2000. Oh, okay. And Matt wasn't ready, so Joe got, you know, some friends to, to fill in. We didn't do Vakken. But, you know, like, those bands that you mentioned, when, when I, I think, like, of all of our, whatever you call it, power, power metal, we were never, like, you know the thrash movement came and we were kind of caught in the middle we had elements and we weren't thrash and we weren't you know we were too heavy for like you know the whatever the glam or the docking yeah but we weren't heavy enough for that you know the san francisco sound you know it was interesting to be in the middle there you know yeah like, yeah that was a weird it. yeah it was kind of a weird and it was for me it was kind of frustrating because you know i like I love thrash metal and I love, you know, that traditional metal as well. And yeah, it was kind of frustrating because yeah, it felt like, yeah, like you guys at all, you know, bands like, like Liege Lord, you know, kind of right. got pigeonholed and pushed aside, which yeah, was too. frustrating when you know, you know, when you hear like, especially interviews with a lot of those thrash guys and they talk about how much they loved and respected and listened to, you know, Liege Lord and Omen and, you know, bands like that. Um, I, I feel the same way with, cause I, I love thrash. You know, I, I, being a guitar player, you know, I could listen to rap because I love the guitar. I, I could listen to Doc and, you know, it was just like, wow, I, I'm trying to make myself better. So I never really like, you know, I never really was like, I'm not right. listening to that. I'm not yeah. listening. You know, it was just like, what's good is good. That's the way I saw it, you know. Was that, 
kind of you know because you guys broke up in 1990 if if i have my dates accurate um which yeah. may not be accurate <laughs> um oh, you're right you're right because i mean we did the last two tours one was with anvil and then we did a candle mask thing and that hmm. was right after that right into mid 1990s you know i think that was it we just, yeah just, was it because you felt like there wasn't the interest or what you know was there and and not to i'm not looking for any you know I don't know if there was turmoil in the band. We don't have to go in I, if there was, but. I wouldn't say turmoil. I'd say it's just, you know, we we're going to sign a longer deal with Metal Blade. And it just, it was, Matt was like, we're never going to make a living doing this. Mm -hmm. You know, we just, it, it just didn't feel right anymore. Gotcha. It didn't feel like everybody wanted to go in different directions with music. So it was time to just pack it in, you know. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. And it sounds like you went and explored some, you know, different avenues musically, I, which is I did. cool. I did. I, you know, I went back to, you know, I went to college for music. I went back and, you know, tried to get better at playing jazz. Got really into blues and, you know, it, it's, it worked at the time, you know what I mean? It seemed, because I wanted to make a living as a musician. I'm an instructor, but I'm like, okay, if I, you know, learn other styles, I can do more gigs and hopefully support myself, which worked you know yeah. worked great and then i support a family with it now so it's still working yeah that's great that's awesome that's very good and yeah and you mentioned you you joined helmet um you know so kind of that uh, whatever you want to you know kind of more alternative metal i guess you could kind of sort of call them kind of yeah. I, you know yeah. i don't know what what is it they call it new metal but you know it's a pretty pretty influential band you know, yeah de definitely i uh Technically, really didn't join. Um, in 2002, Page called me, said he's putting a band together called Gandhi, which was post-Helmet. So he wanted to do three guitar players. So he's like, do you want to play? I'm like, yeah. And we had so much fun. That went on for about a year, year and a half, and then he moved out to the West Coast. But that band had, you know, our drummers were uh, Frank Ferrer, who's in Guns N' Roses now, and Matt Flynn, who's in Room 5. Oh, yeah. it was a, it was a blast. It was drinking too much beer and just laughing our asses off, you know, nice. great experience. So nice. I kind of like pinch hit a couple times in helmet okay, uh, on guitar. And uh, just last year, the ba bassist Dave was going in for surgery. So he had a month tour book. I learned, you know, like about 33 songs in a month on, on the bass. Oh, wow. <laughs> And we got shut down because of COVID after three shows. Oh, yeah. Shit. Do you think, uh, well, maybe, I mean, you know, if he's if he's back and running again. Uh, and I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. I'm, I've lost track a little bit of what Helmet's up to these days. Um, uh, do, do you think you'd ever play with them again? Or do you think that opportunity yeah. would up, pop up again? Paige is like part of my family. He's my father's godson. And we've just oh. been best friends for you know oh, well over 20 years if he needs me I, I can't play drums if he needs someone to step in and pinch hit of course i do it in a heartbeat i love the guys the band he has is amazing you know yeah. people always say the original these guys are phenomenal you know i mean yeah. they're just as tight as as can be so they just put up quite a few albums you know when he got back together i i love them you know i'm biased because cool. A part of that family so yeah 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 i always liked helmet a lot i always thought just a interesting cool you know they had their own sound a very different sound than anybody else especially you know those when they first came out i remember hearing them on the radio i'm like oh what is this i haven't heard this before this is interesting it was uh, heavy with no image it was just pure heavy you know different time signature all weird it was hard to learn coming back into that you know like mm -hmm. it was definitely it threw me some curveballs but a lot of fun Lo nice. I love the challenge and i know uh so so yeah so you did yeah some live work with with them uh and i guess that was yeah like 2006 2005 2006 somewhere around there um and then you also I, oh sorry go ahead i played well gandhi was 2002 into 2003 oh, okay. then page moved out west and he did the size matters album with johnny tempesta oh, okay. um 
and I, I had to cover Chris Trainer, who's in Bush. I had to cover for him. And then we did, I think that was 2005 and 2006, where I pitched him okay. on guitar role. And kind of around that same time, uh, or a little after, I know you did um, some work with Upwards of End Times, which was kind of a prog metal band, right? Yes. Uh, childhood friend Phil Swanson asked me to play on some stuff, and it was a lot of fun. Nice. Love, we all grew up together. We were like the outcasts, the metalheads, you know, drinking beer in parking lots when we were 16 17 just cranking priest and maiden and accept yeah. or whatever or whatever we had you know whatever so what you know he's like i'd love for you to be a part of it and it's funny i hadn't played metal when we were doing that so i kind of get my chops back but it, like when i listen to that stuff it's very bluesy what i was doing you know with mm. the guitar solos because that's what i was into at the moment i tried to make that fit and we had we had a blast yeah, yeah. There's some really cool, interesting stuff that came out of that. I think um, you, know, you played on the. I, it has a really long title. <laughs> I can't. I know. I've tried. I, I've got it written down here somewhere in my notes. Um, yeah, was it the from? What does it say here? Uh, I can't even read my own writing. I, I've heard. I've. It's. It's. Yeah, apocalypse and beyond, or something like that. I can't remember the the full title of that album, but there's some really interesting work on there. Really, really interesting guitar work on there. And as you mentioned, you, where you kind of incorporated kind of this bluesiness into what they were doing, which I thought was a really cool idea and uh, a really cool sound, really rich sound. Um, you know, if you think of of Sabbath, to me that's super bluesy. Yeah, you know, yeah, like totally. Was like, you know, so I guess. Everything kind of comes from that, you know, that blues sound. You know, every to me, everything kind of comes from that American roots music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To I mean, yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, I mean, Iommi is a total blues guy. I mean, he is a total blues player. I mean, in fact, you, you, I'm sure you know this, but before, right before Sabbath, he was in. The, he never, I guess, officially joined, but he played live with Jethro Tull. Oh. Um, you know, and when they were still a, you know, technically a blues band, that early right. Jeff the first album is like it's basically you know less prog, more blues. The first yeah, Jeff, which is great. I love it. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm right there with you. Yeah, uh, cool. Um, so, uh, so I guess the 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 big question I have right now is with the you know the fact that Liege Lord has been playing significant amount of live shows for the the past several years um quite a few years and with the re-releases of of at least the second two albums you know remastered on metal blade um uh you know hopefully freedom's rise will get re-released and, and remastered as well it will because we that's the only one we own oh so, interesting oh okay cool no, cool that one's hard to well, find <laughs> there was talk of doing a box set with metal blade oh wow it was, there was you know they wanted signatures from all of anyone that played on it we had a hard time doing that so they just went ahead and said screw it yeah i mean they own those albums so they put i'm glad they put it out but it frees us up and we can like totally do something with freedom's rise cool that's cool yeah yeah um so that being said can we the fans expect new material we we are in the process it's been taking a long time you know when we made those albums everybody lived in the same town we had a rehearsal studio we were there every night. We have probably about 12, 13 brand new songs that are almost yes. done in demo <laughs> format. Awesome. It, it's, you know, it's kind of like a family contribution. We're all, you know, trying to just make the songs better and make sure, because, you know, we're gone we're going 30, 30 plus years. So we want it to be special, but it, it's definitely kind of a, in that master control kind of realm, you know? Awesome. So nice. yes, hopefully, I'm hoping this year we can get it out. Very cool. Very, that's you made my day. That is great news. That is I can't wait to hear this. Um, that's very cool. Yeah, uh, awesome. And 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 you mentioned it's sort of in the same vein as Master Control. Yeah, I, some of it's a little. You know, it gets heavier. Okay. You know, cool. That's always good. Heavy, it's still in, in that genre, whatever you want to call it, power metal or you know elements of thrash i mean i i always thought we mixed kind of everything together yeah. you know a gumbo of metal so yeah very cool it's kind of like it's going to be very similar to that 
Oh, excellent. That is great news. Do you have a, and maybe you're not at liberty to, is there a working title at this point? Or maybe it's too early in the. I think it's too early. We've thrown some things around, but nothing's set in stone. And if I say anything, Joe will probably bring my neck. <laughs> We right. get together next month to go play Hell's Hero. So, okay. yeah, I don't want to get you in trouble. <laughs> I always do this in interviews, especially if somebody's working on a, a, a new album. Like, hey, can you tell me the title? Like, no, so and so, like the record company or the you know somebody else. I'll get in trouble. I'm like, come on, come on. So I won't, I won't pressure you. But that is great news. Well, That's we, excellent. We don't, we don't have a record company right now. So, I'm oh, okay. Think about doing it ourselves, possibly. Oh, good. Yeah, very good. We'll see what happens. But, you know. Oh, that is great news. That is great news um do you are you do you guys have any uh shows lined up right now do you have anything coming up in the near future we, all we have we're trying not to play much this year so we can focus on this the hell's heroes in texas next month oh cool i don't know if you saw the lineup it's pretty, pretty i did good. hear about it I, I i need to yeah that's really that's in what oak hills is that where that is something like white that oaks music white oaks that's what it was okay cool very cool can, I, can you pause so i can grab another bear oh of course <laughs> all right so cool so the the yeah white oak so um that'll be a killer show because yeah you guys are playing i mean it's a that's a huge lineup it's a couple nights right i think or yeah, is it one night yeah. i think it's two nights there's a, a pre-show but like it, when you look like i used to go see exciter all oh, the time yeah. and they got added to the bill and you know we played a few years back with at keep it true possessed and what a bunch of nice guys, man. Oh, awesome. I love Possessed. I love, yeah, and Exc I just saw Exciter in a bar here in Utah uh, about uh, two months ago. Man, that was a great show. Just holy shit, those guys are just on fire. It was great. I mean, you know, it's it's um, you, know, you know it's Dan and and uh, and you know and Alan, yeah, but, uh, and then Danny on guitar. You know, young guy Danny on guitar who just tears it up and just you know, and true to form, you know, true to the, the original material. And, ah, oh, that was such a cool show. That was a great show. We, we used to go, you know, we live right outside of New York city. So we were at Lemoore's. If we, when we weren't playing, we were there. We, I, well, like my cousin was obsessed with Dan Baylor. So we, whenever they were playing in Connecticut or New York, we, we always went to see them. So it's going to nice. be pretty cool to yeah. actually be on the floor with them. That's great. That's really cool. Um, so uh, I, I've got a few other things I wanted to ask you. I, one, I wanted to go, well, let's go in the way back machine. Um, and I was curious about how you got started in music, how you got started playing guitar. Did you come from a musical family? You know, what was the catalyst for you uh, to, to start playing guitar? I, my father was actually a musician in Italy pre-war. He was a saxophone player oh cool and so we always kind of had music but my dad was very into classical music my sister i my sister was 14 years older than me so she she saw hendrix zeppelin oh wow she started to turn me on to this stuff but i also had an older cousin who played guitar and you know played the accordion for a couple of years and once i started getting you know hearing Jimi hendrix and all this great classic rock stuff i'm like i'm doing that so that that those records kind of led me down to like especially hendrix hendrix is probably my biggest influence oh cool and listening to that i'm like wow i got i, I have to do this this is what i have this is, so you know everything started to take a back seat once i got into music like school sports it was just all about music i just fell in love like deeply in love with the guitar Nice. That's took really lessons, cool. Took lessons from, you know, an older gentleman who hated rock and roll. <laughs> so I had to figure this stuff out. My cousin would help, you know, help me with stuff. But a lot of it was like, I learned how to properly play, but learning like Zeppelin or Henge, I did that on my own. So I started to develop a pretty good ear right at like 10, 11 years old. I could kind of hear what was going on. Nice. And that's a, that's a good age. Like, you know, uh, you know i think childhood especially you know starting young like that because you know similar to learning a language a foreign language i think yeah you're just your brain you know it seems like it's more difficult for older people sometimes uh, yeah, hands down no question about it you know yeah. it was a great time 
to just immerse like into like that whole world, you know, and then being a guitar player, you, you, Sabbath comes, it's like the need for faster, heavier, faster, heavy, you know, it just appealed to me, you know, to play loud and fast. That was like, yeah. you know, that obsession. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's funny because, you know, you mentioned Hendrix. And so it's, I would imagine it was sort of kind of circling back in some ways when you, after Liege Lord, you know, when you first broke up, when you started doing more bluesy stuff, because, you know, that, that was one thing that I'm a massive Hendrix fan. And that's one thing that I always loved about him is you have this psychedelic element to him. And then you have this amazing blues player and jazz player. I mean, and it's all natural. I mean, he didn't, he couldn't read or write music. It's just this natural life. ability. Yeah, that's so cool to, yeah, that was, that was not, not to make this about me at all, but yeah, that was my big turn on to heavy music was Jimi Hendrix. I was, I think about 13 years old and uh, I was at the local library and they had vinyl. You could check out vinyl back then. And I found, and I don't know why I just, I might've been 12. I can't remember. Anyway, I was listening to like new wave and pop music. That was kind of what I was into. And I remember I saw, are you experienced? And the album cover just fascinated me. And I'm like, what is this? So I took it home and just blew my mind. Like, and after that, just heavier and heavier and heavier. That was, I was obsessed with heavy music. <laughs> That's the same. I, I still have my sisters from, Oh, cool. I, you know, I had that, the doors, Zeppelin cream. I loved all of it, but that, that album was like, I just kept going back to it. I'm like, this is the greatest thing. I've ever heard in my life. It just yeah. really was, it, it was so attractive to me. The, the, the noises, the Martians, like, like it sounds at times with feedback, like it's like, wow, it's like those noises in the sci-fi movies I grew up watching. I just loved it. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody sounded like that. And, and the fact that he, he was creating those sounds on archaic, you know, in an archaic studio, like, you know, not, with modern technology, I mean, it, you know, it was modern at the time, but you know, not having the kind of stuff that we have now, it was it's mind blowing to to listen to that and go, this is still completely relevant to music today. <laughs> um, I never get sick of listening to him. I've heard like, you know, whatever limited amount of stuff he put out. Now there's obviously a lot more that I don't know if he would have wanted some of that stuff out. Some of the, you know, I just take it all in. I'm like, you know, you could, you know put a CD of him going to the bathroom and I'd listen to him. I'm just like <laughs> that, that much of a fan. He's just, he, you know, he's really left a mark on my life. He's my, one, you know, my, my all time favorite, like musical hero. Yeah. Very cool. That's cool. So who were some of your other influences in terms of guitar work, you know, whether metal or, or otherwise, you know, like growing up with the classic rock, Jimmy page, you know, it started with that era page clapton and cream i still think cream's the best thing he you know he's ever done yeah um you know after that i started getting into like um my cousin started bringing a lot of my cousin when i refer to my cousin a lot is our drummer's brother oh okay who also a guitar player four or five years four years older than me and he started bringing ufo priest mm. maiden then Lizzie, like all of this, that next generation. So like, you know, I love Tipton, Downing. I love, you know, Adrian Smith, Dave Mur Like I love those guys. But when you talk about like the two, like insane guys, I'm like, what? How do you play like this? It was uh, Uli Roth and Michael Shanker? No, oh, yeah. You know, the Germans just like, wow what the hell is going on here? Getting those early Scorpion albums and the UFO albums. They, they, they kind of changed the game for me, yeah. you know? And then getting, obviously, Eddie Van Halen, another major game changer, you know? Right. So those are like, you know, and, and so many. I just enjoyed, whenever I heard someone playing, like, great solos, I fell in love with, like, you know, oh, I love the bands, so I love the guitar players, you know, whoever was in that band, I love um, Ingve Malmsteen, you get that first album, you're like, what the hell? All right. You know, there's like a shock element that happens where you take, you know, a step back and you're like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's unreal almost. It's otherworldly kind of 
playing. Um, yeah, especially yeah, like you mentioned, like Shankar and uh, yeah, and Eddie Van Halen, and yeah, because I remember yeah the first time I heard that it was just what is this like eruption you know the first time you hear eruption you're like what the doesn't hell make, is this it doesn't make sense when you're just trying to figure out how to play and you hear this it's like how do you get how do you get there yeah you know, yeah the answer is practice you right. know 20 hours a day but yeah. only Roth too you know like oh yeah even, you know before i heard sales of sharon like everything he's on the uh flight of the rainbow virgin killer all that those albums were like this guy's like going to another level. He's definitely yeah. changing the game here. Yeah. And you, it, what's cool, kind of circling back, it, you can definitely hear the, the Hendrix influence with Yuli, um, which is, I always loved about his playing is, is there's no that, doubt. you know, you know, that Hendrix esque element to it. Um, and yeah, like, you know, sales of Toronto, man, that is one of the greatest songs ever written in my opinion. <laughs> that really pushed everyone to figure out how to, you know, like, we can't just play blues. We got. We have to start incorporating this classical element yeah. into the music, which was fantastic. Yeah. And, you know, it, it just it goes on and on with the list of guitar players that, that you know you, you discover. Except, well, Wolf Hoffman. You know, he just it just keeps going and going with the amount of players. That, yeah, that just really got me excited. Well, one thing I think that's you know you all of those players are obviously very talented and have, you know, you know, just killer songs, killer riffs. But I think another element, which is, I think why I like your playing so much is there's also, I mean, there's the skill and then there's also, which I, I, I realize is part of the skill too, but there's the tone and you have this really rich tone, which I Thank love. You. It's very complex and very rich and just, and also very organic. It's, it feels very natural. And I think similar with, with, you know, what you hear with like Yuli Roth and, and Michael Shankar and, and, and those, you know, Adrian Smith is this just, I mean, even though it's heavy and fast, there's still this just beautiful tone to the guitar, you know, it's like important, you know, if it's, yeah. you know, it, you have to, I, which I still work hard at, you know, I've got my favorite amps, I've got my guitars, but it's just tr trying to get what I'm hearing here to go through the amp. You know what I mean? So you, you tweak, I'm, I'm constantly, it's like, you know, the closest I'll ever be to a scientist is working on my sound, you know, cause nice. I, I, it's, when you have your sounds right, psychologically, you're playing better. That's, cool. and, and yeah. that's how my messed up brain works. So <laughs> No, that's cool. I love it. So uh, it's sort of related. I was curious about, um, you know, back in the day with with Liege Lord in the early days, and then maybe now, maybe it's changed, maybe it hasn't. I was curious about the writing process. So, uh, you know, where does that start? Does that start with you? Does it like kind of how does it start with a riff? Like originally, Matt and I, you know, would come up with stuff. Our old singer, Andy, wrote some lyrics. Yeah, it's a riff. It's Matt. Get, handing me a cassette tape of him playing bass for four minutes. Here, I wrote this, put the guitar parts, and vice versa. I bring my, I, I'm not a great lyricist, so I always let Matt write lyrics to, to whatever I came up with. Okay. I, I'm, I, you know, when I think back, it's, it, it was always a, like a family kind of, you know, like it was a family. You brought the riffs, but it took the band to make it sound like that, you know? Yeah. So, you know, like, Nowadays, the way we write, you know, our guitar player now is Danny. He's been with us, Danny Wacker, since we got back together. Amazing. Workhorse, super virtuoso guitar player, writes a ton of stuff. I'll bounce something to him. He'll come back to me with, you know, what he thinks. And we just kind of just, it's a, it, there's no, like, ego. It's like, hmm. who cares? Why don't you want to, you know, fix something I wrote? Go for it. If you make it better and vice versa, we kind of have that that attitude joe joe writes lyrics joe's a great guitar player i don't know if you you know his history he yeah like, yeah oh, overkill yeah right yeah annihilator so you know we it, it, like i said it's 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 kind of a between matt myself joe and danny it's like a four-way process you know we all have to agree on something i'd like to think we all all four of us write everything all the new stuff was written by the four of us the collective and it sounds very organic too which is i think important for a band totally. um, 
you know, I think, well, I won't name names, but, um, you know, there are certain bands that established bands, um, where, well, I'll name names. So, uh, I'm a big Megadeth fan. However, I really struggle with modern Megadeth because I think it's just Dave's solo albums with hired guns. And I think those original albums were, it was much more of a band effort. It, I mean, it's always been his band, you know, Mustaine's yeah. band. But now I think that's what he's kind of lost his edge in a lot of ways. Even though the last album was pretty good. Um, I, I, you know, I like, you know, I like, um, like a lot of stuff he's put out over the years. Yeah, you me know, too. Phenomenal guitar players, you know, like, but you're right. It is, it's his vehicle. Yeah. And I'm sure everyone's, you know, that's how you keep a band together. Someone yeah. owns it and other people are just, you know, kind of subcontractors, you know? Yeah. And I, it's not my thing. You know, I, I never wanted to do that with, like, you know, someone once told me you can't have the singer and the guitar player showing up at a gig in a limo and the drummer's riding his bicycle. Mm -hmm. And that, that really kind of hit me. It's like, you know, that's right. It's true. It's just, yeah. you know. So. Yeah, it's a band. It's got to be a you know a group. Um, speaking of drummers, you guys got uh, just a few years ago. Well, right before the pandemic, uh, Van Williams joined Liege Lord, and of course, you know, awesome drummer. You know, from Nevermore and Ashes of Aries. You know, what a right. killer, amazing drummer, powerhouse. Um, how did that happen? How did that come about? Joe, you know, Joe always talked about band because they toured together with Overkill, Nevermore. And an annihilator and you know van freed up when we uh we i think it was 2019 we, you know we did a bunch of shows and it was fantastic and then the pandemic hit we did nothing um we were just in europe in september played hmm. a local show and van played with us he hell's heroes we're gonna have another drummer because van's uh, you know, he's kind of like got to do his own thing. So it was great having him in the band, but you know, I don't know who's going to play on the album. It's all, we, no oh, one knows okay. what's going on right now, but it was a great experience. And we became super close. You know, like I love, I love Van. He's like family to me. Nice. Nice. Well, that, that'll be interesting to kind of see what, what happens going forward then. That, that's, that, that'll be really interesting to, as far you as. Know, we have, we have someone to play the Hell's Heroes which is a great drummer, you know, but as far as the album, I guess we'll make that decision when it's ready to be, you know, there, there's a little talk of Randy Black, who's very close with Joe, oh, Randy's okay. in destruction, you know, yeah. so he might do it. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, it's all like, we'll deal with it when we get there. Cool. Very cool. Oh, I can't wait to hear it. Oh, it's going to be so good. <laughs> it's going to be so good. Um, well, Tony, I don't want to keep you all day, but I do have one more question for you. Uh, so as you know, my page is Bruising Tunes. I pair uh, craft beer with metal and hard rock albums. Um, so it's a Friday night. Uh, Tony's kicking back, spinning some tunes, drinking some beers. What are you drinking and what are you listening to? Um, tonight, I'm going to probably drink what I'm drinking now, maybe a little homemade wine to shut me down a little later. Uh, I'm going to play guitar and I've been on an Irish music kick today. I, I, I did my walk and workout to some Thin Lizzy. Nice. Um, last night I was at a place with a guy from Ireland owned a place. We listened to some Gary Moore, oh. some Rory Gallagher. And nice. I think I'm, I might do some, some more than Lizzie. I'm, I've been on a big Lizzie kick. Very cool. Days. Might need to take a shot of Jameson too. <laughs> I would if I had some. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, I, I, Thin Lizzie, oh, one of the greatest rock bands ever, in my opinion. Agreed. I love that band. I just, you know, I was listening to Black Rose this morning and I'm like, it's, it's like a lesson in songwriting to me. Mm. You know, it's amazing. You know, it's, and, so many of their albums. I, I I mean, I like everything they did. I always, you know, just, I'm like, wow, this, the twin guitar thing. And, and you know, Leech Lord covers, we do Cold Sweat. We've been doing that since 2019, which, which Van just crushes. He just, yeah. 
just made it so fun to play that tune. Yeah, there's some uh, live footage of that, I believe, on YouTube. I, I know I've seen that. And also, sorry, not to, to spin off in a different direction, but your cover of Kill the King smoking oh my god that is the best cover i think i've ever heard of 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 dio that, that, that that is another thing i forgot to mention i'm a huge rainbow fan yeah i love rainbow oh and, my god uh, black I love black more dio is like one of my favorite singers you know ever so it was a no-brainer to pick something and that song is so manic and crazy you know we just did what we it's like let's just play it faster and let's just enjoy playing it you know the guitars were so fun to learn and i still enjoy playing it you know i still have, have a yeah. blast with it. great song yeah such a cool song yeah sorry i didn't mean to spin off no, of it, but i mean just like, uh, thank you for reminding me because i left rainbow out and, and that's such an important band yeah me, oh know? yeah I, rainbow is yeah one of my all-time favorite bands such a yeah mm -hmm. right up there within lizzie i mean yeah kind no. of I mean, I try not to categorize or, or you know, rank. It's hard. It's yeah. hard. I'm not, because I'm so undecisive. Like, you know, you bring me to an ice cream place and it's like, well, there's so many freaking flavors, man. I don't <laughs> yeah. know what I want, you know? My daughter and I go out for gelato and I'm like, there's too many. Like, it was easy when there was like vanilla and chocolate. That's all you have. <laughs> right. like, yeah. Same thing with music. It's like, I don't have, they're like, that, you know, what's your desert island? Like, you know, if you were, I can't do it. I'm just like, I'm like, pull a trigger because I can't make that decision. Yeah. For yeah. me, it's, it's a mood thing. It's a, it's yeah. What kind of vibe I'm in at that time, which changes constantly. So it's, yeah, it's every, you know, I mean, every band you've mentioned or favorite bands of mine, I, you know, yeah, I couldn't put them in. Yeah. Like exactly what you said. Desert Island. I would fail. I, I have no idea. No, I, no clue. You know, I, let alone, you know bands like if you try to whittle that down to albums oh yeah <laughs> like i don't know <laughs> you know like you're talking one of one of the the first time i saw black sabbath was the mob rules tour oh cool and you know i love that era where some people are like oh, ozzy i'm like i love ozzy but you can't compare his ronnie james dio is like it, it doesn't get any better his yeah. voice is amazing man and i love like i said i love the Ozzy albums are incredible, but you got some people that kind of like hate on the Dio years. I'm like, I love it. Yeah, I'm the same. I'm I love the Dio stuff. I'm a massive Ronnie James Dio fan. So, yeah, anything he touched was gold in my opinion. And exactly. and yeah, I'm the same. I love Ozzy. I love you know early Black Sabbath is you know I, I in fact you can probably see I've got a first album poster behind me kind of it's kind of hidden back there but oh yeah yes 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 i do see yeah. you got some cool stuff um, going on yeah i love love that stuff but yeah ronnie james dio man so good um well wow cool awesome well uh tony thank you so very much for chatting with me it has been an honor and a pleasure cheers my friend um cheers. so four in the afternoon i usually don't do that so. <laughs> well it's only two here so um uh, so for everybody watching, uh, look in the description below. There are links to Liege Lord's Facebook page and their uh, and and other and other things to check out. Um, if you're not familiar with Liege Lord, you need to get familiar with Liege Lord. One of the greatest heavy metal bands ever, in my opinion. I'm a huge fan. Uh, their uh, second two albums were released, re-released, -re remastered, and re-released recently um, on uh, Metal Blade. So check that out. Um, and, uh, and hopefully we will all get to see you guys live in the near future touring through the States. I, I'm hoping to get back out there. I miss doing long tours. I want to definitely get back out there, but you know, if you're, if you're in Texas or come to Hell's Heroes, we'll be there nice. in about a month. We're going to have some fun. Very cool. Thank you, Tony. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Cheers. Cheers.